All right, Frank, good to see you here, bud. Frank and I are in the same mastermind group, and uh, it's uh, always fun to have Frank in here. Frank is cranking right. on a lot of fun stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff together. Paul Cheney, I am glad you're here, buddy. Uh, Paul Cheney has been uh, threatening to become a professional at artificial intelligence. So, threatening. Paul is a uh, pardon me. Threatening is the right word. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Paul, kind of like uh, Frank, is is a copywriter, but uh, Paul. Uh, Paul and I used to work together. Paul has worked here twice now for a number of years. Um, just to give you a little interesting tidbit about my man, Paul. we uh, He's the one who convinced me in 2008, I believe it was, to get involved with social media. You know, I was kind of resistant at the time. And then he convinced me, and I think it was 2009, he convinced me to go and be a speaker or actually on a panel at a social media conference in Boston. And um, in on the flight up there, he is like, OK, John, so, you know, you're on this panel with a bunch of other people. You need to say something that's interesting. I'm like, oh, great. Put some pressure on me. So I have to say something that's interesting. Well, I had written a blog post that I was going to fire off after that and in the blog post I, um, I it was it was about content and conversion because you know I, I was always big on conversion right I wanted people to uh, if they're going to write something you know since my background is marketing and I'm all about selling I, I don't feel the need to write something unless it actually turns into somebody who wants to communicate with me and you know, thus a conversion, right? Um, I want to start building relationships with people. So with all that pressure, um, I decided that an interesting way to phrase this was the phrase, if you know, you've all heard content is king, right? And so I thought it would be great to say, well, if content is king, then conversion is queen. And so as I waded through all the questions the pan or the uh, the guy running the panel was asking, finally he asked a question where I knew I could throw out that lovely little buzz phrase. I threw it out there, and some guy in the audience on Twitter tweeted it. Now keep in mind, this is like what August of 2009, I believe. So he tweets, if content is king, then conversion is queen dash John Munsell bazooka, you know, because he was tweeting this whole event. That tweet has been retweeted at least a couple times a week for the last, what, 14 years. And my daughter just told me uh, yesterday that uh, it's also, uh, I, I, what, two days ago, I don't know, two days ago, it got featured on somebody else's blog post. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. I haven't made a dime off of it yet. So uh, let me let me just interject. You know, I for years I've made my living off of social media marketing related activities. Even wrote some books about it. His quote, eight words, right? If content is king, then conversion is queen. Got got listed as one of the top ten social media quotes of the decade by a very well-known <laughs> marketing guy named Leoden. And uh, it was up there with Seth Godin, I believe. Uh, yeah. A few other notables like that. And I thought, geez, I mean, really? You know, God? Paul hasn't been quoted. He's been jealous of that ever since. <laughs> I have. Literally, I have. Absolutely. But I'm going to take a little credit for it, nonetheless. Yeah, no kidding. If it wasn't for the pressure and the, uh, the impetus to go to that event in the first place. But anyway. You never monetized it like you could and i've always i know i know one day right one day you know maybe then the 15th year i'll do that but anyway appreciate everybody coming back um today is an interesting topic because not a lot of people do uh, image creation and it's 
mind blowing what AI is doing and it, the speed that, that it's improving. Um, it's just, it's crazy. So I want to kind of walk you through an exercise and show you just kind of how much this has changed and evolved and just how powerful it is. So I would love to start with a blog post. So if anybody has a blog post, Paul, no doubt you you might have one we could use, but maybe a blog post. If you got one, what I want to do is take the blog post. Let's use AI to come up with some ideas of an image that would be used inside of the blog post. Let's also take that blog post and see if we can't convert it into a video. And then uh, let's see how we can take the video, if we have time, we may not have time, take the video and turn it into things that you can publish on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, et cetera. And then I also want to walk you through some of the tools that would take a photograph and turn it into something really special using just a couple of clicks. So uh, does anybody have any kind of a blog post that they want to play around with? Nobody. I, I've got one, John, but I don't, I don't know that everybody will find it very interesting. It's about supply chain technology. Okay. That, that, Is that... The, the, we're going to throw a challenge down, Corinne. Go ahead. I mean, that's, that's like, <laughs> You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure everybody will be interested in that topic. Well, let's see. What I, that's kind do. of the point. That's kind of the point, though, right? Take something yeah. like that and see if we can engage people. So I'm very interested. Good idea. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, let's somebody. make it complicated. You're somebody. my people. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of the uh, Sally Field thing. <laughs> somebody likes me. Right? <laughs> likes what I do. Um, let me let me pull it up. Do you want me? Uh, how do you want me to yeah, send just, it to you? just paste the link in the chat and then we'll run from there. How's that sound? Okay. Well, it's not out on a Google Drive. Hold on. Wait. It's uh it, it's it's with a layout team right now. So oh. because I don't have these skills that you're talking about. So thus I am here. As long as it's accessible text, I can play with it. You know, if it's okay. a link that, that we can jump on, we can see what it would do. Uh, if I can get it to you. Okay. Will chat allow me to uh, paste a link? Paste yeah. A link. Okay. Yeah. It just won't allow you to paste a picture. Yeah. Um, coming your way. Coming everybody's way. If you guys are interested in generative AI and supply chain, just let me know. <laughs> All right, let me see. All right, there is the beast. It is a beast. All right. Did you write it or did you have AI write it? Um, I wrote it and then I had AI do an edit through it to dumb it down for a ninth grade level. Awesome. Well done. Okay. So will the power of AI transform supply chain planning? Okay. So let's take it from the top and let me see if I can just uh, save this. Yeah, it's long for a blog post. Um, Sorry, Bob. I'm going to throw it here in my downloads folder. That way we can try to upload it. So here's what we'll do. First, we're going to take that document and we're going to upload it into a couple of AI tools. And then we're going to have it create a prompt for it. Then we're going to take the prompt. Well, actually, we're going to have it create a couple of ideas, and then we'll take it and try to use some of these image. Oh, uh, at the bottom of it some. are some um, some posts already. You may want to just delete those. Yeah, out. I saw that. You're right. You're right. You're um, right. So there's there's okay. like a page of, of posts and uh, commentary. Okay, so I'm going to kill all of this. Yeah, just delete all that. Conclusion. Semantic layer. Okay, so we'll do that. 
Okay. Let's see. Let me go over and we'll take this one. <clears throat> we'll turn on code interpreter and let's just see if code interpreter is bad enough to read the beast, shall we? What is hey, John, code interpreter? You're, you're, you're not sharing your screen, John. Because I'm that smart, <laughs> you know, I need a little more AI. <laughs> um, all right, give me a second here. We'll do this one more time, this time with feeling. I have a tendency to do this all the time in meetings. Okay, so here we go. Let's spread this out. Okay, so this is it. Let's see if Code and Interpreter can read that. And let's just ask it. I don't normally do this. I've never used code interpreter in chat. Yeah, there are a couple of things that you can use. You could also uh, uh, use another tool that I Is love. that a plug? I mean, John, they need, is that, that's a plugin, right? You're using Negative. a plugin. Negative. I'll show you where code interpreter okay. is. Yeah, if you go they in they to know. settings and you go to beta features, you just turn on uh Plugins, of course, if you're going to use a plugin, but you turn on a code interpreter here. It just got released to everybody. I think it was last week. Custom right. instructions is another one that you should turn on. We went over that last week, so we may come back and do that. But anyway, that's how you turn it on. And then, hang on a minute, I'll just go over here. And then over here, you have to turn it on inside of here. If you're going to use plugins, you would go in here, and then you would go through all the plugin library. But we're not going to do that. So we're back over here. Cool. It read it. Okay. So now let's say, um, wow. Um, I'm going to take this summary that it created. And, and there's a reason I have to do this. Uh, let me do this. Because I have to use a plugin to generate a prompt. Okay. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, can you, whoops. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, John. I was, uh, yeah. I got, I got a little sidetracked. Where do you actually go to the uh, code and co uh, interpreter? I'm sorry. No sweat. All right. So we're going to go over here. When you go down here in the bottom corner. Okay. Dang it. Click the little buttons, yeah. the little three dots. Yeah. And you go to settings in beta. Okay. Um, and you click on beta features and you just turn these three on. Okay. okay. Code interpreters at the bottom, plugins, custom instructions. Okay. I see. I'm sorry. I, I'm on my mistake. Okay. That's all right, Archie. You're good. You're good. Okay. So can you suggest, uh, let's just say uh, three images? Um, All right, so let's see what it does. Now, sometimes so, it gets really flowerful. I'm quick, sorry, quick. go ahead, so Archie. Code interpreter, interpreter is not just about interpreting code. No, it's for uploading documents, analyzing documents. It'll do all kinds of things. Uh, it, there's some things that it's getting ready to do that it hasn't quite done yet. But like I've thrown in spreadsheets to have it analyze the data in the spreadsheet. I've thrown in CSV files. I've thrown in images and I found out that it can't quite describe the image yet um, but it'll do a whole lot of interesting things okay so here here we go here's a couple of images an image that shows a graphical interface blah 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 image that shows charge graphs okay so Corinne any of these feel good for you um, well, I mean, the the innovation in startup or the first one around AI and supply chain with a graphical interface or this one. Yeah. I'm very curious <laughs> what it will uh, generate. Yeah. So there's a, a few things that you could do. You could just use this straight up and you could run into a couple of these tools and have it create something. So we'll try that straight out like this. And we're going to start, we'll go into Adobe Firefly. And I'm going to uh, pinch it, or uh, listen to me. I'm just going to paste it in here. Now, do you want it to be a photo? Do you want it to be a graphic? 
you know, there's a, a lot of different styles that we could use here, different concepts, tones, lighting. We can adjust those later, but what would you prefer it to look like art, a graphic, uh, or a photo? Um, a graphic would be good, I think, or a photo. I don't, I mean, right. I don't know what it's going to generate, John. Me neither. That's what the fun thing is, but it'll do it in a couple of seconds. So let's see how she rolls. Certainly faster than me looking through a bunch of images. Yeah. Okay. So the problem is it, it creates text that's unreadable. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that means we'd have to. So maybe not that. Yeah. Maybe not that. I don't know that it'll do that. We may have to pick a different deal. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's the only problem I, I've always had with these things is they end up giving me too much of a description. All right. Let's go back over here. And I tell you what, we're going to come back to this. I'm going to go ahead and let's just for grins, let's go over here to the new chat. And we're going to turn on a plugin called Photorealistic. All right. That one will create a prompt for Mid Journey. And we can get Mid Journey playing around with this. All right. Have anybody ever used Mid Journey? Paul has. Okay. Yeah, I've got an account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So. I just apologize to all of you that it wasn't something more interesting that we're doing a blog post on. That's all right. Maybe we'll come up with uh, a more benign one, something about food. food so if anybody yeah. wants to search for a food blog, go ahead. Food, travel, fashion. There you go. Now look at the description that this beast is using. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about these is uh, when it starts talking, it, when it's trying to describe to you why it recommended the image, that will really cloud up mid journey. So you have to kind of take that and pull some of that stuff out or else it just is just too many words. So what exactly does photo realistic do? Is it interpreting the text and trying to describe an image then? Correct. And it's giving the parameters that you would use inside of mid journey uh -huh. that tell it what the aspect ratio is, what version of mid journey to use, what style to use. And then this is the size and all, a lot of other things. So it's really, really interesting. All right. So if we were to take this now and now mid journey runs a little differently, mid journey runs as a discord app. So you have to have an account in discord to do this so let's go over here and uh maybe i'll just go in newbies 11 and we're going to do you, you start off by saying imagine whoops i'm sorry slash imagine and we can just pop here and then it gives you a space for the prompt you paste it so if i'm going to just paste it exactly as is we can see what happens and now it'll take a little bit of time to create this and then it'll beep and tell me when it's ready. Just out of curiosity, what do you think it would do if we pasted it in here? Mm -hmm. Smoke test it. All right. And I'm going to turn this off just to see what happens. Way better. Way better. Oh, yeah, That's way better. pretty interesting, huh? Yeah. Actually, actually, that got interesting right away. Yeah. Didn't yeah. it? Yeah, that got real interesting. Okay, so now there's uh, Dolly, which is a different one. That's part of OpenAI. So if I go over there, this will be interesting to see if Dolly. Dolly doesn't like that because it's too much of a, too much text. Okay, so we would go back over here um, now. <clears throat> I'm still thinking, wondering why Karen doesn't think AI and supply chain is not interesting because yeah, I'm it is. Yeah. Oh, I think it's very interesting. It. Yeah. I, just, I talk about it all day long. I think it's super interesting. You guys are probably a little more creative in uh, in the markets you're serving, but uh, it's very cool. 
I, I mean, and I think the brain in the conference room is kind of cool from an image yeah. perspective. Yeah. Okay. So, so that was Adobe Firefly. So we're going to go over here to Dolly and let's paste it. See if uh, Dolly comes up with anything. Dolly's not nearly as good. Okay. So now we're going to go over here. Yeah. There you go. Journey and look at see what Mid Journey created. So there's one. Yeah. That's crazy two, good too. Three. <laughs> Four. Oh, so wow. gives you oh yeah those are cool yeah that, everything except like three is good yeah and yeah. so that that generated the photo yeah. based on that description that's right yeah wow yeah. just not so okay so and so here, john yeah. hey john for Talk to me mom for the novices that are on this uh call just use real quick a crayon. You took a blog post that was, and you fed it into chat GPT. Yeah. Uh, then you got these plugins, which is an entire ecosystem that's working with chat GPT, right? Yeah. And you're showing what the different plugins are coming up with in terms of uh, the graphics that you've asked it to create. Almost. Okay. If if I were to diagram it out, and golly, I wish I had a crayon to diagram it out. Um, <laughs> but what I'm doing is I'm taking the content and I'm shoving it into Chat GPT, and then I'm telling Chat GPT to give me some ideas for an image. All right. So what was your first prompt then, John? On did you give it the whole file, or did you do a cut and paste of the text? So I gave it the whole file okay all right so let's see if it'll uh sometimes it squirts out the wrong way yeah here we go okay so i just uploaded the file and you don't have to say can you read this but since it was a right. word document i wanted to make sure that there wasn't any kind of squirreliness to the word document but do we um, we're under code interpreter right yeah, so we took okay. code interpreter to do it now okay. I'll, I'll show you uh another tool um let's see well and in, in order to engage that he went and did the three dots turned it on down there and then clicked on the chat gbt symbol and made sure that yeah. code interpreter was enabled there let me let me ask though john why couldn't you have used just a chat gpt prompt to read the doc i mean it can you could have copied pasted the document in there right or Correct. To plug it could have. Yes. use the yes. link would it not yeah. have how is it different with it, code it would have done that yeah it would would have done that. I was too lazy to do that, Paul. Uh, <laughs> so, uh -huh. so um, what I, I mean, because what typically you'd have to do is say, hey, I'm going to paste some text and I want you to confirm you could read the text. So you have to break it into a multiple prompts. The only reason I went through Code Interpreter is so that I could show you that you can actually now upload a document straight into Chat right. GPT. Yeah. Right. All right. You can also upload yeah. a document straight into Claude. Uh -huh. And I'll show you here. Claude is by Anthropic, and then you just go to Claude.ai/slash chat, um, and you can do that. But you see this little icon right here in Claude allows you to upload a document. Also, all right. Now, to uh, to copy and paste it, could I do that? Yeah, absolutely. So if I go back over here to the Word document, and I just select it all, copy it, and we can just paste it over here. And I can just say, summarize this, just so I can paste it. John, are all, are all of the tools you're using paid subscriptions? Claude is free. Mid-Journey, uh, there's a little fee for Mid-Journey. I can't remember what it is. Bob, do you remember? Is it 20 bucks? Yeah, it's like $20. Yeah. Yeah, 20 bucks. They're all kind of like 10 or $20. Chat GPT, in order to get those advanced things, is $20. 20 bucks. Yeah, mo money, mo money, mo money. All right. So uh, I don't, I don't this. know that image, that image that you got out of that thing, paid for both of those subscriptions, right? I mean, literally. right. Yeah, I literally. agree, Bob. Yeah, because yeah. you, I mean, you think about it, you'd have to like, for instance, uh, one just, of the just the hours to organize it, just to oh, get yeah. people lined up to do it. You burnt two hours. Well, right. in the past, I would have somebody yeah. who would go out and do an image search, right, and then present three or four options for me, and I would like not this because or right. yes this and then they'd go back so right. i so agree with you bob it's very quick um, oh yeah 
Look, we have a couple of subscriptions that we we uh, canceled. So there we had one, two, three RF. We had um, uh, Getty Images. We had Adobe yeah. Stock. <clears throat> you know, so we were paying hundreds of dollars a month to go sift through images, and yeah. you know, and I'm not an idea guy in when it comes to art, right? Yeah. So I can't go, gee, this is a good idea. You know, a dog holding uh, a pencil. You know. I'm, I don't know. So I can't do that stuff. And I certainly can't go and find, I need a picture of a dad walking his little boy along the beach, you know, on um, a sunny day. Take me forever to find it, but I can describe it. I can also, and the whole idea of this in the first place is to get chat GPT to take my unartistic self Mm -hmm. and come up with some ideas for me so going back through the the sequence bob lyles is first get chat gpt to read the document or get claude to read the document okay and and in gpt if you're using a plug-in and those are the differences so technically Code interpreter is a feature, not a plugin. It's a feature that you turn on. The plugins, though, I used this one, photorealistic, because it actually takes your description and turns it into a prompt specifically for the tool called Midjourney. So Midjourney is not part of ChatGPT. It's not a plugin for ChatGPT. So any tool that I'm using over here is a separate subscription. Firefly is is its own subscription with Adobe. Um, Dolly is part of your, I think Dolly is free. Um, But since I have a paid subscription, I I don't know. But Dolly is part of OpenAI, which is part of ChatGPT. So it's a separate tool altogether. There's this other one that's pretty badass called Leonardo. So we might just try to create an image inside of Leonardo too, just to compare all of them. But anyway, that was, that was the idea is like, how do we get all these tools to generate images for us based on a description that we had chat GPT come out or based on some ideas that we had chat GPT come out with. All right. And again, I could use Claude to do the same thing. All right. John, if you're going to get this all the way to the finish line, you're going to have to take an image awesome. and run. I know. I'm going to have to haul ass here. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to take the same post or uh, prompt. I'll paste it over here. I'm just curious what it describes. While that's working, John, so you see plugins for the legal community, plugins for <laughs> On and on and on. I mean, the you know the blog community just just there are tons of plugs and <laughs> plugins to do anything that you want. Um, and and the uh, and that plugin library is growing uh, inside of here. It's growing rapidly. All right. So meanwhile, we go back over here. So now you have all these different images. The other thing that I would love to do is let's create a video. And let's do, um, let's see if we can do this, text. Um, I wonder if I can shoot. Yeah, see, this is if this was actually a URL that it could pull, I could make it do that. Now, whether or not I can actually paste all that text, I don't know. Let's see how much room we have. I might have to just paste a summary. How far did that go? Oop, it, it went all the way. Okay, so let's see. Uh, um, I'm going to get really basic with that. And I'll, I'll let that rock and roll that'll take a little bit of time okay so meanwhile 
I can send you all of these, Corinne. Okay. Okay. Because cool. <laughs> they're, they're fairly cool. Do you have uh, any in particular that you like? <laughs> um, I like the uh, the second one from the left and the fourth one. This one. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. Okay. So we'll download this one. Interesting. What does this mean? I don't want to see it again. Uh, yeah, they they're just letting you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. They're jousting with the morality of using artificial images. <laughs> they're, try, they're trying to get their precursors the, to what the rules are going to be at some point. Yeah. Is that the actor right. strike coming into play? The writer's strike? <laughs> Everybody wants credit. Uh, okay, so then, where were those other images were of the guy standing in the warehouse too? I mean, that that was those were pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Was that so those are in mid journey. Yeah, that was um, John, John, I've got a comment. Talk to me. What's up, John? John, yeah. Um, what I'm looking at is everything seems to be, it's almost like when you ask it for narrative or text, it's verbose or overly expressive and lots of adjectives. I'm seeing the same thing with the images. I, I, I see, you know, it's like this big sci fi thing with lots of complexity and so on. I wonder yeah. what happens if you ask it for minimalist, meaning. It'll do it. Oh yeah, it's very expressive. What I'm saying is, there's a lot of in there. It's almost like an overpromise in the picture, in the image. Yes, that's the impression yeah, can, I'm getting. I'm just saying. No, it is, and and that's the the you know again since I was using that particular plugin yeah. to create that, it created a very complicated thing, and so I typically would take that and I would thin it out quite a bit mm -hmm. so that it wasn't so descriptive, but yeah. Um, in the interest of time, I thought, let's just... I yeah, know, no, no. I understand it. what you're yeah. doing. I'm just saying, I just find the text is overly expressive. Yes. And I'm seeing the same thing in the images. Yes. John, you can, you can run that through again and say, hey, take the remote text and simplify it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and add whatever commentary you want. It'll do, it'll reduce it down, right? So that you can get a different yeah. result. So. Yeah, it'll do all kinds of neat things. So, but I want to, I want to at least afford it. Like it's like we, we can come back. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's trying to be the smartest thing in the room. You know, it's like, let me show you everything I can show you. It, it, it actually may be, really. I mean, when you get yeah. out of that, as far yeah. as its, its ability to address data, the, the size and scope of the data that it can address, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. got a lot more reach than we do. Okay, so let me show you. On MidJourney, when it creates these four things, these little buttons here will say, okay, I want you to upsize these. And it counts it like this, one, two, three, four. So... You'd say I want to upsize two, and that just or upscale. It, it means it's going to be a bigger one, so you can download it. Or you can say, "Give me a lot more variations of either of these." So mm. if you like one and you want variations of it, we just pick one of these buttons, and it would create new variations on that theme. Do you have any of these that um, pick your pick your interest? So I like uh, the guy. I guess it's uh, second row on the left. This guy? Yeah. yeah okay. Do you well. want to see more versions of him or you want to just use him? Um, let's see some versions of him. Let's see okay. him as a woman. <laughs> oh, well, that, that gets tricky. <laughs> you got a uh, In supply you chain? Oh, please. <laughs> hey, come on. It's 40% female. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right. So let's see. It'll create some, some images. Now, the question I have is, um, let's see. Bob, I haven't ever actually edited one of these. I think you just repaste, or do you, yeah. you ever? Yeah, yeah, you just you just copied down and repaste. Yeah, down. that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, so if we go and we uh, if we paste it and simplify it, and John, to your point, let's get rid of some of this activity. That that interface is intricate. Take that out of there. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And for simple about a 3D wireframe model of a brain pulsating energy at the center of the background of sleep, modern office. You know, uh it was fun. How are you doing? All right, so let's see. Uh, yeah, happy Friday, Are you ready? It's only oh, you want to get it work at one hour? We got to fix that. Calvin, the clock. There we go. I just need to mute. Yep. Who's ever on the phone? 
Okay. Um, I'm trying to see where I would say it's a woman. Um, where? I'm just, I'm just kidding. A male is fine. No, no. I mean, there sh should be. It doesn't show me. Yeah, but can you Unless just I'm add it, here. John? Can you just yeah, add it and say with a female figure? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that should be work. Okay. How about this? I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff. Yeah, give, Let's give, see what give happens. That, yeah, just, what do you think? Any other yeah. ideas? Okay, that's very sexist. The woman is being dominated. Oh, please. <laughs> Wait, did I say Wait, dominated? No, you edited, it that out. you edited yeah, that out. Yeah, I changed it to surrounded. Oh, yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, so, so Thank now you. Thank you. Now we know that Paul, eyes are better than mine. Yeah. Paul, Paul stops reading it. The first objectionable word. That's it. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. <laughs> you got to be careful Close now. Uh, you know, yeah. my radar comes up. I'm telling you. All right. Well, this is going to be interesting. So you can see how it slowly develops the pick. Meanwhile, while that's running, let's go over here. And you want to check out the video. Oh, yeah. Let's see what it did. All right. Hang on. This, this, oh, is, this is a different sound. Is this is the one a... where, yeah, this is the one where he was going to make a video. Well, the power of AI about. transform supply chain. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> so. I want to get oh my of, God. I know. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew this was going to freak people out. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to totally freak you out. All right. So <laughs> let me get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need that. Yeah. Right. Um, you can go in and you can edit this, all these scenes too. Holy cow. Okay. So now that we've edited it, um, the other thing that we can do is we can um, mm. record our own voiceover or I can regenerate it, but I can select a voice. I'm trying to figure out where it is here. Yeah, oh, I, it's, it's, I think it's when you regenerate or after you regenerate. <clears throat> okay, so, so we're just going to regenerate the beast based on that. Yeah, I, I use pick to read, John, wait, and wait, it does wait, the same thing. I can actually pick the voice. Actually, I'm just going to just have it do it straight in here. Uh, yeah. so I have got a question. Yeah, can, it be can it be restricted to a set of images? In other words, like our technical data, can it be restricted to everything inside our reference guide, the picture yeah. and the imaging? Yeah, the video, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. So now, oh, okay. <clears throat> Visla is an all in one video storytelling platform. Visla is an all in one video. Visla is an all in one video story. Do you have a voice that oh, you prefer? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You're yeah, blowing so, my mind. Uh, well, you know. Visla is an all-in-one. So whose voice do you like better? Visla is an all-in-one. Do you want to use Sarah? you want to use Michelle? you you got a million voices here to play yeah. with. but Well, you need to use a man since she made the scene dominant with a woman. We need to be you know, fair <laughs> to both sexes. <laughs> I think that I think the woman was entered on a different uh, a different tool, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can, uh, I always okay, so use like the English. Well, the power of AI. <laughs> right. Okay. So I like let's, using the, I like using the English see. or the Australian accents because people actually stop and listen to those for some reason more often. I think I think good. Cajun would be good. Yeah, you got <laughs> There you go. Ooh, that thing is good. Yeah. Bro or <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that we're in the edit mode, it'll Edgy. it'll allow me to go into each of these scenes and I could stitch them together. I could make it, you know, all sit on one image, but each scene is going to have its own unique image. Okay. And so how so, long is the video it creates? This is it, it, it was five minutes. I don't know what it is now. Oh, yeah. So it, can you yeah, say four, make it no more than two minutes or like uh yeah, I probably could do that. I'd have to go back to the prompt. And to actually do just that. I so, think people um, have really short attention spans. That's that's true. Okay, so just for giggles, if I were to go well, that, back that, over well, this thing. to do a YouTube video. Yeah, that, yeah. That's so, the so average that's, on YouTube is the five minute. 
Is it? Marks. That's the reason it picked five minutes to begin with. Yeah. YouTube, that's Interesting. That. Yeah, so but the blog post angles. the blog post looks simpler than that. The blog post yeah. didn't look like a five minute read. The blog post looked like a two minute read. Well, you maybe. Could, yeah, you could. Uh, all right. So just for giggles, let's let's start all over, and we're going to paste it in here, and then we're going to say make. Whoops. If only people read anymore, Paula, it would be perfect. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, they don't read. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on YouTube. That way, it'll it'll make it wide. I could make it any number of things. There's there's more descriptions that I could throw in here to really tighten it up, of course. But um, let's say uh, use uh, email. Whoops. Uh, I don't know what else to use, but so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, yeah. so we'll let it do it. Shoot, I should have taken out the. Uh, the dead gum uh, title, date, and author. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, once you roll and you can't cancel it. So, all right. Well, meanwhile, let's go. Oh, I want to show you another trick here. So there's, you see this little picture. Now, this is Photoshop. And Photoshop yeah. has a new tool called Generative Fill, right. uh, which is really kind of interesting. So I'm going to take this photo just so you can kind of see. I'll zoom up. All right, so there's this thing in the backyard, which is my crawfish boiler <laughs> covered with a canvas. Neighbor's doing some work on his yard. And then up at the top, you can see that I caught some of the roof line in that picture. So I might just tell it, look, um, I want you to just... Uh, Whoops. I want to just have it continue the skyline. Hopefully it won't put a flying saucer in there because one time it actually did, which is really kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why. I don't know how late at night it was when you typed the yeah. clock. But look, see, I don't know what this is. It looks like it's a street lamp, but it, does, yeah. it did a really interesting job of continuing the tree, right? Yeah. And putting in the skyline, which is really kind of cool. Then I could take this little thing and let's just tell it. And I could do the same up here. I could remove these two objects and I have a whole different look. Look at that. See? Wow. Oh, that's Pretty neat. much removed it. And yeah. It, it even put a plant over here, which is kind of fascinating. <laughs> you know? So that's another, I mean, it's just amazing what it'll do, right? Okay. So you're ready to listen to your, your video and it is still five minutes. So he wasn't paying attention to the length. But we could go in it and we could literally delete all this. But let's just see what happens for a couple minutes. Will the power of AI transform supply chain planning? By Hari Menon, CEO at First Shift Date, July 19, 2023. Are you struggling to improve visibility, synchronize supply and demand, and optimize your planning processes with limited resources? Wow. If so, you are not alone. Many supply chain planners face these challenges daily, searching for new insights, automation, and ways to leverage their teams more effectively. In this blog post, we explore how First Shift, a pioneering startup in AI-driven supply chain planning, can help you overcome these obstacles and achieve success. Okay, so you can see that you could go in here, if I were to edit it, I can, you know, like I was showing you before, I can delete these little scenes, I could go down here and I don't need to say in this blog post, uh, <clears throat> whoops. And I could, Here's I could how. like delete the drones, the, um, the, the scene seven drones. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell it to give me another image. You can replace so, that image. Yeah. In this blog post, we, ex okay. So now that I've, I've edited the text, I have to do update recommendation. I have to regenerate the voiceover. 
What in the hell was that? <laughs> really? Oh, those are those are definitely women, but not what I had in mind. Are okay. you in the sex toy business? <laughs> Boy. Okay, that's I, I I have not experienced that in real time. So and I don't honestly, I don't even know how to get rid of it. Hey, uh, John, John, just put them by your pool, man. <laughs> oh man. Okay, well there you go. All right. So then if I were to do this, I I hate to uh to do that button. Because I have no idea how, how that got in there. That's that's a new one on me. I know I know the color correction on my monitors, right? Because you get you're about 18 shades of red further than you were a minute ago. <laughs> All right. So it did reach many supply this. chain planners face these challenges daily, searching for new insights, automation, and ways to leverage their teams more effectively. Here's how First Shift, a pioneering startup in AI-driven supply chain planning can help you overcome these obstacles and achieve success. Yeah. So anyway, if I were to regenerate the whole beast now, um, you know, again, you could, you could shorten it. You could delete things. You can edit all of this inside of this tool, regenerate it, and bam, you, you got it. Now, if you don't like the voiceover, you just record your own, but it's got all that text. I mean, literally that what was that? That is amazing. That is amazing. Seconds. Yeah, no, it's it's and you could have a portfolio of images that you want to work into it. Mm -hmm. So like if you had in, in this case, if I had, um, you know, a, a, a screen capture of the solution or somebody working on the solution or some of the team members collaborating or something, you could just fill that in as one of the one yeah. of the photos or your logo exactly. or your logo. Yeah. Great yeah, point. Exactly. So anyway. It's uh, so here are your here are your women. Now you could obviously get more definitive of what kind nice. of woman you want, and we could even tighten this up to make it even more realistic, etc. But you know, all in a couple of seconds, I could refine the description of what's behind her. I could define her hair color, skin color, eye color, all kinds of stuff. So it's mind blowing. It's amazing. Right? Yeah, amazing. totally amazing. So it's and, and again, you know, the idea is it, it, it's going to save you a ton of time. It does. You don't have to pay royalties on these, which is also very cool. Right. So you can't. You can't possibly uh, estimate how much time this saves because we've spent literally hours looking for a photo. Oh, and yeah. now I could probably spend a couple of minutes just refining the prompt and saying, you know, take this out, do this, fine tune that. So it's, it's fascinating. And again, I, I love just the idea generation part of it now. Um, so, so John, if, uh, if yes, I understand sir. you correctly, <clears throat> you're paying to use the thing, but okay. then if, if Corinne decides she likes it, and wants the video, she's paying a royalty in perpetuity or for some period of time, right? Well, like for instance, if I was using one, two, three RF, I have to pay anywhere from you know fifty to two hundred dollars a month to get access to all of those, um, which gives me the license to use those. You know, we use Getty Images. In fact, that there are a lot of uh, what I call drive-by lawsuits now, where the attorneys are scanning the web looking for images. They're Getty Images, and they'll send you a, a letter that says yeah. you're using our image, yeah. and we're gonna, you know, we're demanding fifteen hundred dollars because you've been using it since X date, you know. And then you have to turn around and prove to them, well, no, we actually, you know, have the license to this. We got it through this person. Blah blah blah. We, we got hit with one of those where our creative director had a license to uh, Getty Images that he apparently had lifted from another um, agency. And they came after us. And we had long since uh, not had that creative director, but they came after us six years later and like, you know what, it'll take me $600 worth of time to figure out how to defend this. So I just like, okay, let me send you a check. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, a it's a very real thing that we had mm -hmm. stuff that we had licensed um, and would get those. And we just had to start like keeping better documentation of what used to be a $50 purchase or 
$75 purchase, you know, with every application of where we used it, it was a pain in the, um, in the tush for my graphic yeah. designer. Yeah. <laughs> sure, totally. Pictory, you're right by Pictory is another one. Frank uses Pictory quite a bit. Uh, so there, there are tons of them, but, um, Anyway, one of the things I wanted to show you uh, as we kind of come to a close, because I know Paul asked, can we get a recording of this? A lot of people, I, you know, have been asking, Archie, I know you've been asking. Uh, so here's what I have been working on. So we have this, this thing called Optics Academy. And in Optics Academy, that's what I'm, what I'm trying to do is give you guys access to this. And all you would do is bop over here to community. All right. Here you'd have access to you know everybody who attended last uh, two weeks ago or last week where we did the brand voice DNA course. You'd have access to to that. You're not going to see all these because these are stuff for uh, other clients of ours. But when you jump over to the community, you'll see the CXO roundtable in here, and up here you'll see upcoming roundtables, and then here you'd see the replays and you could just jump over here and play out the replay. The, the um, you'll also be able to go in here and you can have discussion, talk amongst yourselves, ask questions, introduce yourself. So if you want to use this as a community to continue the discussion, you can do that. I know a lot of people have uh, questions sometimes about a replay, feel free to pop it in there and ask away the, um, the problem I'm having is trying to automate access to all this. And so I'm about a couple of hours away. It's just trying to find those two hours uh, to, to pull it all together. But sometime, probably over the weekend, you'll get an email that shows you how to do all this. I have six pieces of software that I have to integrate. Uh, I see Barry Ballou is on the, on the call. Hey, Barry. Uh, Barry being the software Hello. Uh, mogul. Um, if, if I had your, uh, your team from back in the fast back days, I'd have this finished by now, but anyway. Trust me, it was, uh, a bit more refined and a lot simpler. So <laughs> I'm astonished at all the moving parts to the technology industry. Um, yeah. it, uh, overwhelms me. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing. What's, what's interesting. So I, I don't know how many of you guys date back this far, but I go all the way back to floppy disks and Barry's company created a, a product called fastback. They would back up your entire hard drive, which at the time was what, 10 megabytes, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Um, right. And uh, he had this uh, just amazing company that eventually got bought out by Symantec uh, in Baton Rouge. Everything, I, I, I'm not sure, Barry, but just about everything that you built back then could probably be written with AI now because of the way it writes code. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. Yes. Anyway. Well, we had a lot of, uh, we had a lot of global titles that... Uh... Uh, distinguished us at the time, and um, it was a, a pretty amazing adventure. Um, I'm I've been sidelined for a while, but I still have great intrigue with the whole field of technology, and uh, and, and pleased to be invited to attend this meeting today. No, we're glad you you could join us. Well, anyway, uh, I appreciate everybody else on the call coming. So if uh, if you do want access to the replays, um, Kelly, I don't know whether you have the link to it, um, but it's probably bazooka.com slash roundtable replays or something like that. Let me see if I can figure out what it is. Or... I don't know. Kelly, you got it somewhere? John, can I get the pictures you downloaded? Is that it? Yeah. So uh, Angie pasted it. Go, Angie. Love oh, you, man. wow. Wow. <laughs> Faster than it. we are. On it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She's all over it. Uh, yeah. If I just navigated to my website and clicked through it, I probably could have found it too. <laughs> when mm -hmm. I was stuck. Uh, so, anyway, that's it. So, I'm sorry. What was the question again? I said, can I get uh, the pictures that you downloaded? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm going to download all those and zip them up and I'll send them over to you.
Yeah, Wait, 14, sure. 14, 1495. That's the name. That's right. For, for, for you, <laughs> my friend. 1495. Just let me know where to where to send it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Corinne, do I have your email address? I know that I got you on LinkedIn, but if, if we haven't, uh, send me your email address on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll okay. send it on over. Sure we'll thing. Rock and roll. All right, guys. Well, thanks everybody for attending. Um, if you have any uh, thoughts for future topics, once you get access to the community, please throw them in there. We'd be happy to to, to cover them all. So, hey, all John, right, thanks again. Yes, sir. John, Talk to be, me. be careful which pictures you're emailing. Some of those you may get put in jail. For. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Bob, for thanks for tip. looking out for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's right. All right. Y'all have a great day. Thank thanks, you. John. All right, thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks so much.